Anne Burnick knew what they were doing. They knew that they were making just something special, something just beyond what they've done up until this point. Hey everyone, I'm Aiden Walls, and today I am pretty excited. This is the culmination of everything I have dreamed of in a device. I know that's saying a lot. And us as YouTubers tend, well me, I tend to get excited and then I say a whole lot of things and then I watch the video in a few months time and I think, what the hell was I thinking? But you know, I took a moment just to pause and think to myself, am I going to make this video and just rave about it? We're gonna do an unboxing. I've literally just taken a look at this with my kids. The kids were excited about it. And I think therein lies the secret is, I grew up wanting a Game Boy. I grew up in the 80s and I could never afford one. And so this whole retro journey has kind of been sparked by that unfulfilled childhood desire to have a Game Boy. And the closest thing I got is the Miu Mini and the Miu Mini Plus. And that sort of cheap plastic experience is cool. But this is all of that, I don't know, there's just something special about it. So let's get into it. Let's play around with it and give our final verdict. So this is the RG Nano. It is a, what I would put in a, a, a new segment or a segment that doesn't have a lot of devices in it, the micro retro emulation device. They call it the nano, micro, whatever. There's only really the Funky S and then these, the, the, I think it's the PowerKitty Q36, which I've never tested. I'm gonna get the Funky S in. I'm gonna end up with two of these devices. So also subscribe because I'm probably going to give one away. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at it quickly before I get too ahead of myself. So I don't have huge hands and it is, it is hefty because it is a metal device. So here we go. They've put the usual sponge on top. This is my little Miu Mini here. And this device, people have complained, is too small. <laughs> so you could fit two of these and a little space to spare inside of the Miu Mini. The Miu Mini is wider than it. It just is tiny, but what I think Ambernick have intentionally or unintentionally stumbled upon is the fact that there is a space in the market for a premium micro or nano retro emulation device. You know, this is $60 excluding shipping. The shipping was quite expensive, about $30. So, you know, if you're a South African, local South African watching this, you're gonna think, Aiden, that is a ridiculous amount of money for a tiny little, little device. But this device is a gift. This is something that you, you give someone as something special. So someone like myself, who's super into this, you know, who's dreamt of having a Game Boy his whole life, this would be the ultimate gift for me. I, you know, if someone gave this to me at the beginning of my retro journey, I would be completely amazed. So there we have, I accidentally started it up by pressing this button here. We've got the SD card slot on the side. If you have a look at this clock, in the middle is Anbernick's logo, right in the middle there. That makes me think Anbernick knew what they were doing. They knew that they were making just something special, something just beyond what they've done up until this point. I know I'm getting very extreme about this device. I don't usually watch all the other reviews because I don't want to get tainted or, or copy them or whatever, but I just feel like everyone got a little bit too technical with this device. I think this device has an emotional response to it. I watched Retro Dodo's video today and I fully agree with him. Like he got really excited about this device. It's the first device I've seen him get super amped about. And I just agree with him. I think this is just a special device. I know he's a sucker for metal handhelds and my first device was the Anbernic RG350M. So I also love a metal handheld, but you know, I've grown to love all these plastic handhelds because it gives you that sort of retro experience. This is just something special. So let's have another look. And we've got the SD card slot. We've got the, the Game Boy grill effect here. It's definitely modeled on a Game Boy, which again is just, it's just a beautiful little gift. Like it's, it's a, a miniaturized version of history. You've got your spot for the lanyard there. There's a speaker grill at the bottom here. So that's interesting because there's a, a fake speaker grill over here. And what I also like is even though it's completely unnecessary, there's still a little chamfer at the bottom corner here as the original Game Boy was. We've got a USB slash DC. I'm wondering if we can add games and stuff via that. And then obviously the shoulder buttons, like I mentioned, are very clicky. 
And then let's just try out these buttons for a second. So I do have slightly skinnier thumbs. I like, a, I, you know, for instance, um, I was watching one of the reviewers and they have huge thumbs. And so this is going to be very difficult for them. For someone like me, this is this is manageable. These action buttons, they, they, they're a bit softer than your usual Anbernic action buttons. The D-pad, you know, for a micro D-pad, this is this is really nice. It's got a, a, a slight softness to it, but it's 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 a typical Anbernic brilliant D-pad. Really, really nice. So we'll see how that plays. I was hoping for rubber mushy start and select here, but they don't have that. Soft press on the rubber, so that's nice. So in the box, you also have this little keychain, which you know I'm reluctant to use this as a keychain because you know you're going to scratch the screen. And then we also have what I'm guessing is just going to be a usual USB-C cable. With this, if you do want to use headphones, it's got a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which you would just pop in there and use your headphones like that. And this this does work as an MP3 player. So if you are still stuck in you know the 2000s and you're still using MP3s, you can do that. All right, so it says here, press start to enter the system, press start to set the time. Okay, so this is open Dingdix, which I think is a problem because this is something that, you know, you're going to give as a gift and the first thing the person's going to see is open Dingdix. Let's just see if I press this. So that's your, that's your menu control, which is very nice. So if you press this, um, let's just have a look at the manual here. So the reason I'm doing this sort of cold is because I want to see what the setup experience is like because if... And Benick are going for a premium micro handheld option. Our forgiveness of these manuals being pretty much useless needs to fall away because this is going to be a gift that you give to someone. Okay, I'm not going to lie, this is quite confusing. So I, you know, I am a tinkerer and I am I have kind of already figured it figured it out, but I'm trying to follow the prompts of the device and I'm kind of lost. This unboxing and playing, starting this video, I started off with incredible excitement this, and I'm, I'm emulating what is going to happen when people buy this thing. Tinkerers are going to buy this, but mostly they are going to buy it. Immediately I ordered this and I am going to end up with two of them and I immediately thought, who in the family am I going to give this to? Because it is perfect, a perfect little toy to give to someone. And uh, if this is how difficult it is for them to use it, it's kind of crazy. And then the thing is, if you want to go into the launcher interface, there's nothing in the the, the manual about that set time interface press the power button to enter and set the automatic shutdown time so that's i saw that now we know approaching blah 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 there is literally nothing about the launcher if ambernick are watching this what i would say is you see that this device needs to launch here it shouldn't be such a mission to get into the place that's easy to use that shouldn't be how this device is set up from the from the start it should start here and so they needs they need to completely bypass the the back end you need to have the clock you need to press a button and immediately go into here the, 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 that all that song and dance i just did to get to this point is flipping frustrating. It's funny because I watched um, Retro Dodo's video and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a positive video about this device. And so the first thing I'm doing is having a good fat moan about it because it is, like I said, this is supposed to be a premium device and it just doesn't have that premium experience. It's a very frustrating startup experience. Okay, let's, let's see. Once I've got that going, let's see now if I press this select button. Okay, that's your menu. That makes sense to me. So now that you're here, the, the power button is, is doubles as a menu button. And here it's very easy to go between all these things, set your theme, the G menu 2X menu system, which I don't think any the person who buys this should not have access to that power down. So all of this now makes sense. This and I think this is in game, you're able to do this. D pad is very nice. Let's switch the brightness down. So that is a very nice a very nice low brightness. So I'm in the studio here and I've set this top camera to, to deal with the bright screen. But this, you know, playing in bed next to someone, it's a nice dim, dim setting. So let's go back in there, let's turn the brightness right back up again. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a feeling for this thing. So, all right, so if I press and hold the power button, it's gonna go into the clock, I think. There we go, yeah, so now we're in the clock. That's great, and then if we wanna get out of that, uh, that's to set the, the auto power off, do that, and then I press start, I think. Yeah, so start brings me into the menu system. So that is great, I like that, that's nice, that's easy to use. All right, now what we do is, all we want is this little menu here. I think it's because, you know, the community loves to tinker, and so Ambernick want people to go in and tweak their emulators. 
I just don't think that should be an option on a device like this. All right, so let's navigate around. You know, I think this should just be a one and done system. Let's go into something. So let me just put this near the mic. And here's where you go. So I'm going out of the, I'm going into the clock now. And then if I press start, so it's got these cool little sounds that it makes within the menu system. Okay, so now we are in it and we are looking at Game Boy. All right, so this menu is fantastic. This is brilliant. And you know, they did take this from the Funky S and you know, Ambernic are getting better with their software, but it makes sense that the good part of the software is from Funky. All right, let's get a game going. And you know, people complain about the fact that it's a square screen. I think it's brilliant. I think for this device, this is exactly what you need. You need a tiny little screen that looks excellent, and this really does look excellent. Let's put the volume up. There we go, full volume. My fingers are small, but you'll see. Okay, let's actually look to see if there's, you know, the problem with D-pads often is the ghost. Yeah, so there's a little bit of false diagonals, but there. So if you press it in properly, a little bit, not too bad. So like I said, I do have sort of skinny little fingers and I am managing. So I think anyone with bigger fingers than mine will struggle with this device. All right, so now that I'm in the game, here's the, so we've got aspect ratio stretched, scaled, stretched. Okay, so let's go scaled. I can't see a difference on this, but I'm guessing on um, Game Boy Advanced, you know, you're gonna stretch here. Ah, yes, so I do have a slight bezel at the top and the bottom now because Game Boy wasn't perfectly square. So let's go back to stretched. Actually, I prefer it scaled because the pixels look better. And there's exit game. So that's what I was looking for. So you've got save slots, load slots, save slots, which is lovely. And then you've got exit game. So with a lot of these retro emulators, you have to press. So when I set up a device for my wife or my kids or whatever, just the fact that you have to press two buttons to so, so press select and start to get out of a game in say um, emulation station. That's like a weird thing, you know, it's not a normal UI thing on mainstream devices. So to have a thing where you press a button, go into a menu and you exit the game, are you sure? Yes, that is excellent. That is very, very, very good. This is a great Pokemon device, you know, sits like this, hold it in one hand and play Pokemon. It, it's actually going to be fantastic for that. My little son is going to go crazy for this thing. All right, so to go back to the menu, so I, I'd, like I say, it's frustrating that it didn't open up here because now suddenly all these things in the menu, in the, in the manual, make sense. So all these shortcut keys, I've just kind of been playing around with them. Um, they all work. Just a note to Ammonick, please do that for us. It'll make a huge difference to just have it open up in this menu. There's something to be said about a tiny little device that can play everything up to PlayStation 1. I'm actually really looking forward to trying out Colin McRae. Let's just go in here and again, I think, top tip, I think for these older systems like Game Boy Color and Game Boy, um, just Game Boy, I think you should do the scaled um, option, the aspect ratio, because then your pixel, so if you, I'll kind of cut between these two in the, in the edit, so stretched. So if you look at the pixels, it's definitely nicer when it's not stretched. All right, so let's start a game. Oh, there we go. I can do fireballs. Oh, and that's actually not that difficult. And the spinning kick, let's try. There we go. I mean, this Game Boy Color is a little bit easier to do fireballs on, but I mean, that is kind of the point, isn't it, for a small little handout like this. This is incredible. Oh man, okay. All right, let's go out of this. I can't find a shortcut to exit games. You know, the other systems that I think are gonna be great on here are NES. I think NES will be quite nice on here. And uh, Game Boy Advance, I've heard guys complain about. Let's just see what we've got here. Let's try Crash Bandicoot Game Boy Advance version. And let's immediately, because stretched is just gonna be awful. Change the cropped. No, I don't want cropped. So what cropped is gonna do is it's going to crop the Game Boy Advance screen into a square, but it, it's, it's a landscape screen. So you're gonna lose the edges. So I don't recommend that. I think scaled is gonna be your best option here. It's gonna be tiny, but let's try it out. <laughs> the screen is lovely. So, you know, again, like I'm going to tinker around with this and do another video because like I say, I'm getting a second one. I wanna do another video with the two different colors and kind of put it more through its paces and get into the nitty gritty of this device. But 
This is not something that people are going to tinker with. I doubt lots of people are going to plug this in even. I don't think people are even going to plug it in to put music on. I think they are literally just going to get this as a gift and play it as a novelty item or even sit on someone's desk and be used as a clock. I, I literally think that is what this device is going to be used for. Obviously, there's the community like us who will put this thing to, to, to its absolute max. Somebody will tweak the firmware to open up in, in this. I'll see now if I switch it off and switch it on again, if it's going to open up in the main menu system. At the end of the day, just having games on here, ready to play, everything ready to go, I think that is what you need. And so there's decent games on here and it's ready to roll. And I think and Benico really onto something. I think they just need to tweak the firmware so that it opens up in the, into this main menu system. But anyway, all right, so something like Crash Bandicoot where the gameplay is sort of centered, it's fine. You know, if I go back and forth, you don't go off screen. Now it's playable. Like um, the pixels aren't great and all that, but it, you know, if there's a game you want to play on Game Boy Advance, you can try it out in crop mode, but I just don't think this is ideal for that. I really want to try out PS1. So let's give it a go. Let's go out of this game. Exit game. Yes, I am sure. These buttons feel good. There's a, they're sliding against the metal. I can definitely feel that. So they will get that white powder along the edge of the buttons, but don't think it's the end of the world. All right. So PlayStation, let's have a look here. Tekken, Resident Evil, you know, like complicated games are going to be difficult. Since I was doing Crash Bandicoot, let's do Crash 2. Taking a while to load. I think let's go with stretched. All right. Let's go, Crash. Okay, it says it's stretched, but it's actually not fully to the edge of the screen, which is a good thing. <laughs> this, you know, this feels like the beginning of retro emulation where it was like a novelty to be able to play on these small devices. Like, I can't believe I'm playing PS1 on this tiny little device. This is insanity. This D-pad is flipping fantastic. It's really, really good. And the buttons are great. I'm really enjoying this device, like way more than I expected to. And Manik, you are really onto something with this thing. I think it's it's capturing like the essence of what we are trying to get with retro gaming. Like it's capturing something special. Sorry, I'm referencing Retro Dodo a lot in this video, but I, I think it's been on my mind because he went to go see Casey Neistat, who um, I really have enjoyed over the years. And to see Casey discover retro gaming again, and he gave him the fun key S. And I, I watched someone who isn't into this niche, you know, like someone that's not on the Discord and not tweaking things and adding weird software. Someone that just is like a kid who's experiencing all these devices for the first time, all the way from the fun key S, all the way up to a really fancy, you know, $200 device. To see him play the fun case and go, this is totally playable. And to think to myself, you know, we get so technical about these things. I feel like this captures the essence of what, you know, what Casey was experiencing. It's a tiny little device that plays PlayStation 1. You know, we had big consoles on our TV that played those games. And now it's, it's literally in your top pockets. That is just a wonderful, wonderful experience. I, I say to myself, this device, either I'm going to love it or I'm going to think it's crap. And this, I, I love it. Like, and it is an emotional thing. Like this is a, this is a gift that you are going to give to someone. It's got lovely anodized metal. It comes in three cool little colors. You've got a lanyard, so you can just hang it on someone. You can hang it on your handbag or whatever. It's really, really cool. I really like this device. If you have been on the fence, I, you know, it, it's expensive for what it is. It's sixty dollars, and shipping has gone up on Anbenek because they want their devices to get to people quicker. So in South Africa, sixty plus thirty dollars—that's you know ninety dollars. That's quite a lot of money. But if you are buying something for someone for Christmas who loves special little things, you know, like someone like Casey Neistat who kind of has everything, and you want to buy them something special, this really is that thing. Okay, last little test. I want to switch it off. Okay, so I press and hold and shut it down. Okay, let's power it up. And Nick, great. That was kind of the last cherry on the cake. I wanted to see if it opens up where you last were playing, and it does. So this, apart from that first little initial frustration, maybe I'll make a quick YouTube short for people when they, you know, when they, when they start it up and they go, oh, what do I do with this thing? And there's a little short video to explain the, the first little frustration of the RG Nano, because everything else about this thing is absolutely flawless.